Hey. Yeah? I just want to take another look at you. Boy, I hope he's talking about the truck. Back at putting heat in the old truck. So as you can see, I painted the uh, housing for the heater core. So that's pretty cool. I even got, check this out. I got the sticker for it that's gonna go right in that circle there. Pretty snazzy. Anyway, I also had the 12 volt blower motor for it. Now this honestly didn't fit. These holes didn't line up with the holes. So I had to drill other ones and I just centered it accordingly. So, But I will, I'll start slapping this back together and then I'll get it back in the truck. But before I get it into the truck, to me it makes sense to uh, paint in here. My light, my light died. Yeah, my light died. Oh well. So I'm gonna do some pour 15 in here. I'll have to mass it off so it doesn't bleed through or anything. Um, I gotta keep an eye on it because the weather seal here for the windshield's leaking and I got some water dripping down. So I probably won't do way down on the floor here where it's wet, just up where the uh, heater core is gonna block me from getting at any of it. So I might as well hit that with 415 right now. Okay, so one problem you can see, you can see right there, water. I push all the snow off of the top of the cab, but because my weather stripping around the windshield is so cracked and bad, I got water seeping into the cab, which is going onto the floor, which is a no-no if I'm gonna put poor 15 rust converter down on it. So I'm trying to dry it out best I can. Good times. Well, as you can see, I got it, I got it coated for the most part. So it's not perfect, but once again, it's a rat. It doesn't need to be. All right, we'll let it dry. Hit it again tomorrow. All right, it's been a few days. 415 is nice and dry. It turned out good. So it'll get covered with insulation and carpet eventually. I did the ceiling too. I figured now is the time to do the ceiling. So I gotta paint the dash. I, I mean it makes sense. I gotta I should paint the dash before I put carpet on the floor and all that fun stuff. So I'm gonna do that. But right now, I've got an itch I want to scratch. This summer, I bought this for this truck. I want to class up the truck a little bit. So I'm going to see if it'll fit. Now, you can tell looking at it, get a view on it. You can tell looking at it, it's a lot deeper than what I have on there now. But you know what? I don't care. I'm going to pull it off. Let's see what it looks like and see if I can still fit my fat belly in between here. Okay, for those of you that have never seen this before, the steering wheel has two holes that are threaded in them, right here and right here. And this puller just pushes on the uh, center point of the steering shaft here. And then these two bolts will pull up on it when I turn this down. And so let's see. Uh, uh, all right, I'm gonna have to use two hands. I can't use the camera and do this. Give me a second. Oh, yeah, that's not good. I'm already bending stuff, I feel like. When the puller flips over like that, that's not a good sign. I'll thread these bolts in more. Yeah, but they're in pretty good. What the heck with it? We're going for it. Sometimes you gotta hammer on this. Let me get a hammer quick. A little at a 
time. And we'll turn a little hammer. Oh, this thing's on there. Wow, this is not going good for me. Doesn't want to come off. Oh crap, something stripped. Oh no, it popped. Good. Whew, that scared me. <laughs> okay, so now that it's loose, it should just be able to pull it right up like that. Put that down. And you can see the, the focus, you can see the splines here. That's where that's where it makes the contact and stays in place. Let's see if this even fits. Gotta hope it does. Gonna suck if it doesn't. And it does. But, so here's the question. I don't got a lot of space between this one pack, I call it. That's not a six pack, but which is one big pack. And that. Let's see. My awesome visor. Come on, get up out of my way. So, I mean, it doesn't block my vision, per se. I'm, like, right about there when I look out the window, so it's it's fine. But it is a little close to my gut. I don't know. Let's see from another angle. Ooh. Got to go down as far as I can. I mean, it's not. <laughs> I'm not skinny, that's for sure. But it's so cool looking. The sucker is right in your face, isn't it? But I mean, I'll have. I'm gonna put in a lap belt. I've already bought them. I just have not installed them yet. Or uh, not a lap belt. I'm sorry, shoulder belt. So. I don't know. I don't know. It looks pretty cool though. I like it a lot. Check it out. Look at that. That is just so cool. I love the looks of it. I do. <laughs> it's cool. I don't know. We'll see. All right, so before I put the heater core and the heater back in, all that fun stuff, I figured I should probably paint the dash. I want to paint the inside of this and make it somewhat pretty. I'm not going to get crazy. I'm not going to do the door jams or anything like that. I'm just going to do the dash, maybe around like this trim and the back eventually. I've still got cab corners to do, so it's not like I'm going to, I'm not going to get crazy and get behind the seat. Rat rod, remember, keyword rat rod. So, but I am, I'll make the, I'll get the dash, I'll paint it up, that way I don't gotta worry about getting over spray or masking up the heater core. So, we'll sand it, get a primed and paint it, and go, go, go. Primed? Okay, so I painted the inside of the cab. While that is drying, I figured I would work on this. Now, the weather seal, on the front and the back windshield, they're all cracks. See the big crack I got there? I think a big chunk's missing. I got more cracks up here. The front and the back windshields, uh, the seals are all cracked. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna use black caulking. I'm gonna caulk up the big areas, or silicone it, fill them in. And then, I, as you can see, I'm masking on both sides of it. What I'm just gonna do is, I'm just gonna take black flex seal and spray around it to get it so it's good and watertight. Now, some of you might be going, wow, you're really, a, <laughs> that's kind of a hack thing to do. Remember, it's just a rat rod. And then two, I, I mean, I am saving a little money. What, I think on Brothers, the front windshield seal is 40 bucks. I don't know what the back one goes for. Let's just say, I don't know, 20 or 30. So let's just say you got 60 bucks there, plus another 10 bucks in shipping. I'm guessing on that too. 
let's say you got 70 bucks into it. Well, Flex Seal is 12 bucks and the tube of caulking was like seven or eight. So let's say I got 20 bucks into it. So I'm saving a little bit of money there. But what I'm also doing is I'm saving time. I need to get this thing done and ready uh, for just driving. I need to, I'm gonna put this thing to work. So, and then I need to get back onto that. And then I need to get that done and I need to get a Firebird in here. And there's other projects that I wanna get going on this summer, which we'll show you later down the line. So I know it's a little bit of a hack job, but you know, it's a rat rod, who cares? Painted. All right, it's the next day. Flux seal's pretty dry, so. Um, and where I put the caulking down, it's still a little soft, but that's all right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a nice sharp knife. I'm gonna score both sides of the weather seal before I try to take this tape off. Uh, I'm just scared if I try to take it off now, it'll just pull on that flex seal and it just won't be as pretty. So we'll do that and see what it looks like. All right, so here's the final result. You tell, is it perfect? No, that's okay. That's what this truck's all about. She's sealed up though. Uh, knock on wood, I'm hoping it doesn't leak anymore. So, all right, let's finally put some heat in this thing, shall we? I've got everything painted. Let's just slap this heater core together, shall we? All right, so I've got the housing for the fan in and the fan, the fan, I tested it. I put uh, power to it. It spins, it doesn't shake, it pushes some air. It works good. I'm happy with that. So now I gotta put the actual heater core in here. Now you can see you got the tubes coming out and you got the holes right there for it. But what you need, need to know is before you put it in, see these glue lines right here? They had insulation in this thing to sandwich it and to uh, there, there's the other one right there. Um, or no, that wouldn't be it, would it? I don't know. They had insulation in here. So what I gotta do is, well, let's just put it in there. This thing sits in here like this. Yeah, so I had insulation here, which would be here and then right here. So to replace that, I just went to the hardware store. You guys are gonna learn I like going to the hardware store for parts because it's a lot cheaper than anything else or uh, than anything you find online to rebuild these things. You know, knock on wood, hopefully it works just well. Um, I got foam tape. It was like six, seven bucks, whatever. Depends on the what kind you get. But I'm just gonna put foam tape in there and that should sandwich this and keep this in place so it doesn't bang around and make a hot mess. So let's put it in. Exact measurement, right? I think we can make that work. But uh, it shouldn't rattle around in there. Shouldn't is always the word. See where it's been hitting there and it's been hitting in there. So you can see the little, see the teeth marks in there. So uh, yeah, we're gonna roll with it. 
Okay. Well, I think it's all together. <laughs> I don't know. I guess we'll find out, right? All right, we're finally putting it in. It's about time, Nick. So I'm just, I don't know, I'm just throwing this thing up here. Let's just see what happens, huh? Should the wires through there. Make sure the fan the blower motor goes that hole. Also, what else have I seen here? Come on now, you. All right, you can see that big hole where the blower motor went. There's a seal that goes around there. I gotta find it. That's what I was wondering what's going on. But, I mean, it's up and in. So I gotta put some bolts in it and it'll be in place. It's pretty cool. Okay, so you can see there, you know, I gotta obviously put the gasket in. I've got it here, but as you can see, it's, it's too big for it. <laughs> so, what the heck with it? I'm just gonna make one. I made one out of cardboard or construction paper. I'm just gonna wrap it with black duct tape so it's like waterproof. And then uh, I'll put this over it and mark my holes, drill it and put it in. So one thing to be mindful of, <laughs> if you buy that, I think it was from Brothers, you know, the old seal's not gonna work on it. You need to get a seal with it if they offer it to. So, so there it is. <laughs> my homemade gasket so it's dead so i mean it's it fits snug and it's strong it's got duct tape on it we'll put it in see how it looks there she's not perfect but she's in and she's sealed for the most part and whatever if i got a little space i'll put some light in there if i got any little space i'll just put a little bit of black silicone in there big deal love the rat okay next let's deal with the heater hoses going to the heater core. Now, in past videos, there's like a, like a splitter valve. I honestly, I don't know what it is. I looked in my owner's manual, this thing, I can't find exactly what that's called or what that is, but I've been known to be blind before, so I probably just missed it in the book. I'm gonna guess it's just like a shut off valve for summertime, so hot water or coolant is not going through my heater core and, getting too so it doesn't get too hot in the cab in the summer i'm guessing that's what it is i can't find that shame on me for not putting it in a place where i can find it but the heck with it for now i'm not going to worry about it i'm just going to hook this thing up direct to the heater core and if it gets too hot or if i find out what that is i'm sure i can find that splitter valve or whatever that is in a junkyard so i'm not going to worry about it right now um i'm going to hook these up so it looks like both the hose ends on the heater core are 5 8 So I'm just gonna run a shorter 5 8 hose off this and run the one 5 8 right in there and hook it up and hopefully I have heat. And then I also gotta do my wiring. So I'll figure that out, let's go. So here's a little tip. When you're doing stuff like this, where you're messing with heater hoses and you just gotta unplug them quick and then replug plug them back in, as long as they're not brittle and they're still soft and don't crack, just pinch them off with a pair of vice grips. That way you don't you lose so much coolant and you don't gotta worry about draining the whole system. So I am, I'm just gonna undo this quick, put it into here and then I'll feed this other line through here. I'll lose a little bit, but nothing to write home about. Okay, so I got it together and I thought, oh, everything was good. I mean, I made a little bit of a mess. You know, I, I knew I was gonna spill some but uh i thought everything was okay then i saw that puddle <laughs> and i went what's going on and the heater core was leaking of course panicked but then i just realized i just didn't tighten up the hose clamps all the way it's still when i lean on it it still leaks a little bit it's just getting all that residual stuff out of there i think so i think slash hope yeah, I hope so. <laughs> we'll find out, right? All right, so I doubled up the hose clamps. 
and it's been dry for probably a good 20 minutes now. So I think, knock on wood, that did it. Let's move on to wiring up a switch in this thing, shall we? I got the blower motor switch all wired up. So I've even got it tied into the ignition the way it should be. And the little light is even blue. It, match, it matches the dash. I like it. Like I said, test it out. It's tied into the ignition just the way that it should be. I like it. All right, so I believe this is the last thing I need to do, the duct work for the defrost. So from here to here, and I've got another one on the driver's side. I'll show you what I'm gonna do about that. So uh, when you go to Brothers website, they show you the kit that they sell for the hoses for the duct work. And there's like eight hoses, I don't know why. I, in my eyes, you only need two, you know, one on each side for the defrost, but whatever i'm sure there's a reason but what i did was to save a nickel i just went to the hardware store i just measured what i needed and this is the closest i get to it so i mean i've got how many feet i've got eight feet of this stuff so i could pack it up in the attic of the garage and use it for the next one too i'm not going to use eight feet on this as i make more of a mess in my garage well yeah i'll just cut this up to size and Clamp it down and make it work. Let's see how it looks. All right, so there it is. So you can see I just cheated. <laughs> this is the closest size. They're actually two different sizes. This was, I think, one and seven eighths for this defroster. And the other side, and the driver's side, it was two inch diameter, outside diameter for the hose. So obviously the hose I got was just one size. So once again, rat rod, I just duct taped them. So no one's gonna see them. It's gonna function. That's what matters to me. All right. So, I think it's time to test it. Even though I don't have a steering wheel on it, I'll have to remedy that. Okay, well, I guess it's now or never. Boy, that interior looks sweet, doesn't it? I like that brown and that blue, actually. It doesn't sound like a really good combo, but I kind of like that brown seat with a blue dash. Anyway, focus, Nick. I still gotta, I still gotta, you know, install this all the way, I'm gonna put screw it in, but man, it looks so cool. The dash. Okay, once again, focus, Nick. Okay, so let's, uh, hopefully, hopefully I didn't drain the battery so much. Let's see if she starts up. Ooh, she revving high there. <laughs> All right, set her sitting idle. Bump it up a little bit with a choke. Let's see if this thing uh, warms up in the cab. I'll open the garage door and we'll check on it in a bit. Well, I just made it cold in my garage for no reason. I could smell gas. My carburetor's leaking. I'm lucky it didn't start a fire. So give me a bit. Let me get the garage to warm up again. Let me figure this out. Yay. Garage temperature check. 12 degrees. Oh, that sucks. All right. So I hopefully fixed the carburetor on it. It looked like a gasket went out on it. So I just made a new gasket for it. Let's fire it up, see if it leaks. All right, well, I think I fixed it. So let's see, uh, let's see how I make sure the heater core is not leaking, huh? It's getting a little hot. No wetness. That's good. Let's turn the fan on, let's see what happens. Oh, it's blowing on hot air. It's blowing on hot air, I love it. So we're gonna let this sit in idle for a bit. See what happens. All right, I got it running. It's what, 42 degrees? <laughs> Sorry, I can't find my temp gun. But I figured, you know what? It's been a while, let's go for a ride. 
It's working! <laughs> Pretty excited. It's cold out. There's a lot of snow. And I'm warm in here. So much I even got my window rolled down a little bit. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you for watching. I sure do appreciate it. If you could like and subscribe, per usual, you'd be my hero. Thanks again. Take care.